My name is Adam Metallo. I'm Vincent Rossi. And I work for the digitization program office in the Smithsonian Institution. And I document collections in 3D. The majority of the Smithsonian's collection is 3D, so we think that it has a real future. Usually the first reason that we'd make an object available uh, in a digitized form would be for scientific research um, and then educational use. Beyond that, public access in general is a very exciting implication. The way laser scanning works is a laser beam bounces off an object and back into a sensor, and the time it takes to do that could be equated to a very precise measurement. So here we have um, a medium range laser scanner. So this is a, a phase shift scanner. So we have a laser beam that comes out the side, and then the mirror that's beveled at 45 degrees spins very, very quickly, and it's capturing about a million points per second, and then the whole unit turns about 180 degrees. So we're capturing sort of a spherical 3D snapshot of your environment. So if you're 3D scanning um, an empty room, you could scan that whole room in probably five minutes at the push of a button. But if you're scanning something like the Dinosaur Hall, um, with all the occlusions and objects in your way, all the line of sight issues, you need many, many scan positions. That's usually what reality is more like. So over here to my right is a, a laser arm scanner. So this arm scanner, the way it works is you, you almost paint the object with a laser beam. So as you're painting the object with the laser beam, you're seeing that 3D data pop up in real time on the laptop. Um, so each one of the axes on this laser arm scanner is sort of tracking the positional information. Because these tools were not designed for museum applications, uh, the pipeline that we have to develop, we're kind of cobbling together and we're essentially end users of the technology. The documentation of an archaeological site is uh, an obvious use for 3D documentation and that way not only are we able to bring back fossils from a given site, but we're able to preserve the context that those fossils remained in before they're removed. So they were widening the Pan American Highway. Um, in doing so, they uncovered over 40 complete fossil whale specimens, but it might take decades for them to remove the fossils from the rock. So we're able to capture sort of this snapshot in time in 3D of what that site looked like. The prospect of 3D printing a 25 foot long whale that we scanned in the Atacama Desert in Chile is pretty exciting. We've had a number of 3D prints go on exhibit already. About two years ago, we did a 3D scan of Abraham Lincoln's hand. That was a cast that was done of his hand. And the reason we chose 3D scanning is because mold making was not an option. So pouring silicon rubber on this uh, historic object uh, posed a risk to it. So without touching the object, we're able to capture the 3D geometry on a computer and then take that data, uh, deliver it to a 3D printer that can bring that object back into the real world. Life casts were taken of Lincoln just before the Civil War and in the remaining months of the Civil War. So we have essentially a 3D re representation of a sitting president um, over the course of a few years. By scanning the masks and seeing the toll that the um, war took on the president, we can have a much more sort of visceral uh, experience and understanding of, of what he was going through. One interesting project that we were approached to take on was the digitization of a rare orchid. We've 3D scanned the 1903 Wright Flyer, so that was the first aircraft um, that was ever flown. We're actually just beginning to work with educators in the classroom and educators throughout the Smithsonian to sort of troubleshoot how to make 3D models engageable and sort of 3D printable in a meaningful way in the classroom. We're in a unique position that we see all these tools that were developed for other industries like engineering, architecture, um, the medical industry, um, and we could see how these tools can be applied for the Smithsonian mission. We're also very intrigued with the idea of just seeing what people can make of the data. Everybody knows what to do with a photograph, um, but we want to see what the world can do with uh, polygon models and uh, CT models of Smithsonian artifacts.